Marge Easterling. So one of the things that I wanted to cover for everybody are, you know, because I'm also interested in the gadgets and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the sort of, you know, little sort of, you know, small accommodations mm -hmm. that, that you make. One of the things that we did, and it was interesting because you should really make the accommodations before it's imperative that you make the accommodations. So we switched our bathroom. We had that remodeled pretty quickly because we knew getting in and out of a tub was going to be challenging. So we did a shower stall and had him, you know, a chair or whatever. So that really helped. That was probably the fastest thing. And then we put a bar, you know, next to the toilet. And that made a big difference too for my dad because our goal was to keep him at home as long as possible. Um, if not completely, and so that was important, other than the rugs. The other thing that we did um, was I realized as he lost more and more muscle control, the big spoons, you know, we, we switched from going to like teaspoons, and then we had to switch to tablespoons, so, and, and it's little things like that that you accommodate for and you don't realize. And I remember I was putting dishes away one day and I was like, Jesus Christ, we've got a shit ton of these spoons. Like, where did they come? And then I was like, oh yeah, not even thinking about it. Because you do that, you kind of gradually accommodate as you need. Um, and as he lost muscle control, like with closing and opening and swallowing was challenging, he would just kind of like use the spoons to shovel it in and, and we would, um, accommodate the type of food too so like we he can't have steak so you know but he could have chili my dad loved chili that's good and um he told me one time he was like if you will get me a chili dog i will let you cut it up for me <laughs> <laughs> instead of just getting like chili on a bun because that's what i would do because you know hot dogs it becomes a choking right. hazard just sure. like with kids right. so it was all those little things that we had to kind of accommodate for. One of the other things that I used to do is I would, it was my job to take him to church every Sunday because my mom would work nights. And so I would take him to church on Sundays and I would go through a drive through and, you know, get him some biscuits and gravy or something like that that was easy for him to eat. And he would get it all over his face. And so I would be like, come here and let me clean you off. And he would be like, no, 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 people can tell I'm loved because <laughs> I got him gravy yeah. but and I would take like extra shirts yep. because you know you're yeah, you'll find good. out it's stuff good. is gonna spill and yes. and my mom had a hard time with that I guess because it's her mate to me like I said it's just somebody else I'm taking care of but I would just you know let him make a mess and then we get to the car and I change his shirt no big deal so you learn like little things like that that's a good idea the other thing that just so you'll know is when I would take him out to dinner, we would, like if I got him spaghetti and meatballs or something, I would switch plates with him and like cut his stuff up really fine and then switch back. So then it's not so obvious either. Right. So, idea. yeah, that's another little tip for you. Yes, so um, did you find that there were, well, first of all, how did the Huntington's, because you know, everybody's different, mm -hmm. how did it affect your dad's Cognition. Well, that was the first symptom. And looking back, we know that that was the first symptom because it got to where he didn't want to leave the house at all, not even for church, which was a big deal, um, for years and suffered from depression and, and all of that first. And he was having some of the motor skill impairment, but not to the degree that it was so obvious. So for my father, the mental changes happened years before the physical changes. I see. <clears throat> so, um, and, it, and it progresses differently. Some people have the, the physical changes long before, right. and some people will have a mix of both. So it just depends, it's always different. But what I have found is that um, there are interesting parallels, like the way that people, like you were talking about your gait, right. how you kick that leg out, right. that's pretty common with Huntington's. And you know, what else is interesting to me is the fact that you're, I feel like you're kind of a numbers guy too. You're really, that logical mindset. 
Um, and my dad was the same way. And you like, keep you like rum pole. Yes, I do. Rum pole of the big And that was my dad's favorite show. I know you told me that. Which is awesome. so obscure. But now, did, was your dad, did, yes, did the Huntington's affect his ability to think or process information? Um, I, that's an interesting question. My dad was always still my dad. Right. So, um, I would say yes, it did affect his ability to process information since he did overdraw the checking account buying stuff that we didn't need. <laughs> but he was all, he always kept that that crazy sense of humor, that very sarcastic, dry sense of humor. So you know he would be out and he would knock something over and he would go, "Oh, Huntington's moment," <laughs> you know, and just. We just learn to laugh about it. You've got to laugh about it. If yes. you don't laugh about it, then you'll cry, and there's no point right. doing that yeah. because exactly. it is what it is. Yes. Mm. But, yeah. yeah, it was, we had some good times. He told me one time I would always kind of, it got to where he, he could enjoy so little, so few things, but he always loved food, yep. especially sweets. My dad had a sweet tooth. And so I would bribe him to do stuff with Marchino cherries nice. and with chocolate chip cookie dough. Awesome. So I would make him homemade chocolate chip cookie dough. And um, he told me one time, he goes, we got any cherries anywhere? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think so. He goes, some pig probably ate them all. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, probably. He goes, probably me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> but he always had that sense of humor. So he was always still himself, even though um, he still couldn't balance the checkbook anymore. I got you. Not that they have checkbooks anymore. Right. Like. So have you noticed, um, I think for my dad it was harder for him to convey what was going on yes. than it was that he was had that impairment. Yes. And he also, have you started, what do they call it when you repeat the same thing over and over again? Have yeah. you have you had any of that happen? I, um, I don't think so. Okay. Except when I'm doing it like on purpose. Right. But no. Well, he would. Um, it got to the point where it was really hard for him to to get his words out. But then when he got them out, he would repeat them. So he had this little dog that he absolutely <laughs> loved. We had three of the same dog. They all looked the same, and he named them the same thing. So he wouldn't get confused, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But he would um, he would try to call his dog, and it would take him a minute. And he would be I could see visibly that he was trying. He'd be like, "Mom pup, mom pup, mom pup, mom pup, mom pup," <laughs> and it would just kind of trail off. So, and that's also common with um, yep. Huntington's, you know, as as that progresses. Yeah. Well, what I find is I have you know I guess they call it latency, where I'll just stop and right. wait, you know. And, because my brain is full and I have to reboot right. and then I pick up again. Yes. I used to think of them as dramatic pauses. But, yes. But yes. Emily was like, it's just weird, but it, there's a there's a reason. Right. That's exactly. We went through that too. Yeah. And Absolutely. Yeah. And I always thought it was a dramatic pause too. Yeah. I was going to go with you on that. And I started forgetting things, you know, like in court, I would forget the name of like the police officer that I was examining who I had just met 15 minutes ago. And well, that I, kind that of, too. I know, but I'm saying that kind of stuff, which kind, right. of, kind of worried me. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, I've kind of slowed down. And I, you know, I buy what I call my kind of extreme short-term memory is really bad. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I go to the neurologist, they'll read me this list of like 10 words. Mm -hmm. And they make me repeat it. And I can, you know, if I'm like really kicking butt, I can remember like three words. Right. Yeah, so, but. In fact, it's anyway, but that's just so it's stuff like that. that I um, find. Have you had issues with directions? Yes, I can't find places that I yes. haven't been before. Yes, that's a huge thing, and that that actually was one of the things that was that one of your first symptoms, and you yeah. really realized that was yeah, one of I ours was, too. Yeah, I would be out like, yeah, trying to find a you know places I've been before is not a problem, but like trying to find a bank where I'm supposed to meet somebody, and I right. know that it's got to be like right here, and then I like walk. 20 feet past the building and it's right next to it, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yes, that was probably the first sign that I knew something was seriously wrong with my dad. Um, because my dad was always, he's the one that taught me this, the love of maps. I love maps and like, you know, knowing how yes. to get to places and geography and he was always really big with maps. 
and he came to visit me in New Orleans, he and my mom. And when he came down, we sent him down the street, same street that I lived on. Like, you just take a left and right there a few blocks down to a Popeye's, because we didn't have Popeye's up here at the time. Wow. So he went to pick up lunch for us, and he called me and was lost and didn't know how to get back. And I was like, what do you mean you're lost? Like, you're, what? And that was long before he was diagnosed. But that was probably the first sign that I was like, there is something seriously going on with my dad. That was scary to me. Because it wasn't like there were 15 turns. It was right down the street. Yeah. But and I found that's pretty common too. Yeah, I started having, yeah, that was, and you know, mostly it was, you know, I mean, I'm a third generation Eagle Scout, so, you know, that's never been a problem right. for me. <laughs> but, and it wasn't like, you know, it ever happened in a situation where like the world was gonna end. Right. It wasn't like I was driving somebody to the hospital who was like, you know, right. to death and I couldn't find the hospital. Mm -hmm. But I was like, well, that's just crazy. I, you know, can't find places and they're like right in front of me. That kind of stuff. Well, if you enjoyed today's video, please like it and uh, forward it to everybody you know and leave positive comments. Thanks.